we get fragments that wash up on the shore. We bring the fragments back here. Dr. Lorraine Simpson so watches over dozens of tanks where seagrass is growing. In the seagrass nursery, we have four of the seven species that you would find in the Indian River Lagoon. The director of research and conservation at the Florida Oceanographic Society says seagrass is a foundational part of the St. Lucie estuary as a food source, a habitat, and much more. The seagrass helps to stabilize our sediments in the water column, right? And if you don't have the seagrass there, this um, sand is constantly kicked up and it moves around much more. But with freshwater discharges from Lake Okeechobee pouring in, the salinity levels in the St. Lucie River have already dropped dramatically, according to Society Executive Director Mark Perry. It dropped from uh, about 20, 25 parts per thousand at the Roosevelt Bridge down to down to five parts per thousand. Fresh water is zero. Environmentalists fear 20 to 25 days of discharges could not only destroy the seagrass, but also oyster reefs. So there's a massive quantity of dirty, silty water flowing out the St. Lucie Lock and Dam now. We knew we had to get a baseline photograph to compare what's coming. Jackie Thurlow Lippish and her husband Ed took this video last week before the discharges began. And we thought, what a shame that this is going to get wrecked. The former governing board member with the South Florida Water Management District says they'll take flight again in the coming days, wary of what the Army Corps is doing. But this is much, much more than they did last year. Environmentalists will get to take their concerns directly to the Army Corps of Engineers this Thursday at the next meeting of the Rivers Coalition in Stewart. John Shaman, WPTV News Channel 5.